In this video, we're going to compare Sequitor directly against Deep Sky Stacker. These are both awesome free applications you can use to stack your Astro images. But recently, Deep Sky Stacker came out with a 64 bit version. And in the past, it was only 32 bit, which meant more often than not, it would actually crash in the middle of processing. So now that there's a 64 bit version, I wanted to create this video and we'll see which application actually works better. So, with that out of the way, we'll head over to Sequitor first. And this is the main user interface, pretty simplistic, which is actually kind of nice. You don't have overly complicated uh, setup. So all we have to do first is double click on star images. And you can either use raw or you can use TIFF files for this. Normally they recommend raw, but in my experience, using TIFFs works a little bit better after you've done some editing in camera raw. Anyway, once you've added all of your star images, it's automatically going to pick out a base image for reference. It's usually in the middle of the stack. So you don't have to worry about that. The noise images, that's another word for dark frames. So if you have those, you can add them in. And also the flat fields uh, to correct for your vignette. I don't have either of those, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Then all I have to do is double click on output and specify the file name. So I can name this Sequitor 3. Then we'll come down here to the bottom and this is where we have uh, all of our different settings. First, we have composition. You can choose either accumulation or you can do select best pixels. And this is normally what I use. And it says here it implements a Sigma clipping average, which I think is the same process that's done in Deep Sky Stacker. So uh, very similar process there. And you can usually drag the slider over here to the right for a very strict uh, radius. So it should perform a little bit better. And really that's all you have to worry about. Um, you don't have to really do anything else here, but you could, you know, normally I turn on high dynamic range just to prevent the highlights bl from blowing out, but I'm gonna leave that turned off. You'll notice too, there's a yellow light here next to remove dynamic noises. What that'll do if you turn it on is it'll try and find hot pixels in your photos and automatically remove them. However, I'm shooting 30 second exposures here, so I'm not gonna have any hot pixels anyway, so no point turning that on. You can also try and remove distortion effects, uh, either with a telephoto lens or a wide angle lens, but Again, I don't really have to worry about that with my particular lens, so I can leave that turned off. And that's really all there is to it. So I can click Start, and then Sequitor is gonna go through and do all of its processing. And once this finishes, we'll head over to the Deep Sky Stacker next, and we'll try that processing. All right, Sequitor has finished the processing, and this took about three minutes to do, so pretty quick here. Now we're gonna head over to Deep Sky Stacker, and you can see the user interface is largely the same. You know, we have our open our picture files and our dark files up here our different settings down here. So in some ways they're very similar, but I'm gonna click open picture files to start, select all of my raw images again. And then all I have to do now is hit check all here on the left. That way they're all checked. Then I can double click on any image if I want to, and it'll load up a preview of the file. And it usually does a terrible job of showing the preview. That's not really what the image looked like. So I don't really understand uh, why it doesn't do a good job, but you can always come up here to the upper right and adjust the, kind of looks like a level slider in uh, Photoshop, but this just gives you a better idea of what the photo might look like. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't actually affect any of the processing though. So that's just to see the image, but the main thing here again was adding all of our picture files and then hitting check all on the left. That's the first thing to do. And if you had your dark frames or flat frames or anything else, you can add those in as well. I don't have them though, so I'm not gonna bother. Then all we have to do at this point is hit register checked pictures. And this is where we can choose all of our settings. So you wanna make sure that stack after registering is checked. And for the amount of uh, pictures here, if you leave it to 100, it's gonna use every single photo. But the way I like to do this is drop it down to 80 or 90. That way, if there were some images that had some motion blur that I didn't catch, it will remove them for me. And that'll give you usually a little bit higher quality final image. Then what we want to do is go over to the advanced tab and there's a star detection threshold slider. And I think it defaults to 10. So once you hit compute selected uh, amount or whatever that was, it's going to go through and it's going to look for the amount of stars you have in your photo. And as far as I'm aware, the more stars it finds, the more accurate it might be with your aligning, but it'll take obviously a lot longer if you've got like 5,000 stars. So if I move it to the right, it'll find less stars. And as far as I'm aware, there's no real right number here. If it shows you zero stars though, that's not gonna work. And if it shows you again, 5,000 stars or something like that, it's gonna take forever. So normally I try and get a couple hundred and 
you know, even just looking at the image, you can get a very rough idea of how many stars are there. So I think this is pretty good. Personally, this is right around where I'm at is between 40 and 50%. It seems to work okay for me. All right, with that out of the way, we'll go to recommended settings now. And it's showing me everything's already set in green. You really don't have to worry about any of this. It should just automatically pick the right settings for you. And it's telling me I have short exposures with low signal to noise, which is true. These were only like 30 second images. Uh, but you can do that or you can hit stacking parameters and this will allow you to change all of the settings in the application. So first we have the different stacking modes. Standard's probably gonna work best for everybody. That's gonna be this green rectangle. And this is where it's gonna use a reference light frame. I think it'll probably pick out the one in the middle of your stack. Mosaic mode, this is where it's gonna use all of your photos. So if you do mosaic, you might have some weird corners, especially if your object drifted throughout the frame, which very often happens to me. So I probably wouldn't recommend that, but you can try it. Uh, standard mode is probably fine though. And if you have an older camera or a camera with low megapixels, you might want to do the two times drizzle, but anybody with a modern DSLR probably doesn't want to check that because it'll, I think it at least doubles, if not quadruples the overall image size. So you can imagine it's just going to blow everything out. And especially if you've got a very large object, you're photographing like the Orion Nebula, there's really no point to do the drizzle. It's mainly for smaller objects. So I'm not going to worry about that. For our stacking mode, we can see here there's that uh, Kappa Sigma, which I believe is the same thing that's used in Sequitor. That's usually what it defaults to, so I'm going to leave it there. Then we'll go to Alignment, which should just be Automatic. Intermediate Files, I make sure to leave this on TIFF. I don't bother with a calibrated file. Cosmetic, this is where you can try and remove hot pixels, but again, I don't have those in a 30 second photo, so I'm not going to worry about it. And then finally, Output. You want to make sure that you have all the same things. And down here, I always make sure I put it in a special folder. If you click on the name, it'll get you right where you need to go. You can specify a new folder, but everything here looks good. And all I have to do is hit OK. Hit OK one more time. And this is where it's saying I don't have any dark frames or flat frames or anything like that. But it's kind of nice. It shows you how much exposure time you actually have. So in this case, I had about 30 minutes. Not really all that much, but it should be OK to get a decent photo of Orion. And then once you have all of your settings done, we'll just hit OK. And it's going to go through and do all of our processing. But as you can see, there's quite a few more steps here in Deep Sky Stacker, but it's still more or less the same process. Really, all you're doing is adding in all your files, hitting Check All. Then you got to register Check Pictures, do your star detection threshold to find a couple hundred stars usually. Then you just have to hit OK and hit OK usually, and that's really all you have to do. It's actually pretty simple once you get over all the different links and the settings and all that. By default, normally everything works out OK. So I'm going to hit OK, and then once this finishes, we'll look at both objects in Photoshop, and we'll see which one comes out on top. All right, so Deep Sky Stacker has finished the processing, and the output image looks terrible, but this isn't what it's actually going to look like. So don't worry if you see something terrible. Uh, it's not going to be the final photo. And at this point, you can even close out of here and head over to Photoshop. But one thing I have noticed is that Deep Sky Stacker usually takes twice the amount of time as Sequitor. So that's already one advantage of using Sequitor is it's a lot faster. But right now, we have our autosave.tiff. This is straight out of Deep Sky Stacker and, of course, our Sequitor image. And one problem you're going to have with the Deep Sky Stacker photo is that a lot of your adjustments are grayed out. And that's because it saves it as a 32-bit TIFF file. So to get around that, we'll go up to Image, Mode, and instead of being on 32 bits, we want to put this down to 16. That way we can do our normal editing. And when you click on 16, it's going to bring up this window. And it'll also probably ruin the photo. So what you need to do is change the method to exposure and gamma. And that'll get it back to normal. And you could increase the exposure a little bit if your photo is kind of dark. But in this case, mine's okay. So there we go. And now we have a 16-bit TIFF we can work with. And what I want to do is drag my sequitor image over. That way they're both in the same workspace. And then I'll rename this so uh, we don't get confused here. So there's Sequitor, and here is Deep Sky Stacker. All right, now the first thing I notice here is that Sequitor has a more realistic color balance, or at least the colors look better. But why don't we zoom in and we'll see how well each one looks up close. And the images aren't quite lined up, but that's okay. One problem I notice almost all the time with Sequitor is that's just a little bit grainy and there's a lot of color noise in the photo that's already kind of visible. 
compared to Deep Sky Stacker. It appears to be quite a bit cleaner. And this really isn't a big deal. You can fix this in about five seconds if you have color noise. All you have to do is go up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and then go to the Detail tab. And we have our noise reduction sliders here. So I normally zoom in all the way, increase the color to between 10 and 20 is more than enough. And you can also do your luminance noise reduction here as well. Just a little bit to take some of that grain out. Then I'll hit OK. And that kind of fixed the problem right there. And they look pretty good, both images now. Still, I think the sequidor has a slight advantage just due to the color balance, but that's something you'll have to do in your editing. So I'm going to run through a very quick edit for both images, and we'll see just how well the final image comes out. And this is something I really cover in depth in my new Deep Sky course, which has like 10 hours of content. Uh, it's supposed to just be a little bonus, but it ended up being a full course. So if you want to learn more about how to edit your Deep Sky images of Nebula and Galaxies, you can head over to my website and check that out. I probably will have some tutorials here on YouTube as well in the future, but you can already see that had a nice impact on the photo. And I'm going to just do a few more edits. We're not going to spend too much time here today, but I just want to bring out some more of this faint detail in the photo. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's a good starting point for the sequitor image. There we go. All right, so that's sequitor done. Now let's hit up Deep Sky Stacker. And I'll do my initial contrast adjustments like so. And what I'm doing is I'm just using the hand tool here and curves. And I'm trying to add contrast to bring out some of this fainter detail, which very often tends to get lost. And by adding multiple curves levels, or curves layers rather, you're able to continually stack these adjustments just to bring out you know, more detail and color in the photo. But one of the problems I'm having right now is still this color cast. And that was, it's not really that hard to get rid of, but sometimes it can be kind of a pain uh, especially it looks like today. It's giving me a little bit of trouble, but nothing we can't handle here. And then we'll do a saturation layer. And then we'll make these all clipping masks. All right, one more. because It's kind of greenish and red. I'll even try. Yeah, that looks a lot better. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. So there's Sequitor versus Deep Sky Stacker. And one more thing I'll do. You might notice some weird banding when you're doing these edits. And that's just because of a glitch in Photoshop. As far as I'm aware, it creates an ugly banding that won't really show up when you flatten all of your layers. So I'm going to merge all of them very quickly. All right, so we have Sequitor on top, and Deep Sky Stacker on the bottom. And if I zoom in on the Deep Sky Stacker image, we have a lot of color noise that's visible now because I didn't fix it at the start of the workflow. And it was kind of hidden away at first, but now it's really becoming apparent just how awful it looks. So again, to fix that, I'll go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and then we'll just zoom in all the way and not very hard at all. You know, would that take 20 seconds to fix it? And already the image looks a lot better. So with all that out of the way, there's Sequitor and Deep Sky Stacker. They look largely identical. The color's a little bit off, and that's just because I went through there very quickly using a curves adjustment. And uh, I really wouldn't put too much stock in it if they look, you know, if one looks better or worse in terms of colors. But the sequitor image is noticeably grainier still. You know, it might be a little hard to see in the video, but in this case, Deep Sky Stacker is definitely cleaner than sequitor. And I did a little bit of noise reduction on sequitor too, so it shouldn't be that much grainier. Uh, so that is kind of a problem. And, you know, it's definitely a bit grainier. So, 
I know this went through kind of quick, but now we can at least see how each image looks from both applications. And I think the big takeaway today is that they're both going to work great. They're both free. You can't go wrong either way, especially now that Deep Sky Stacker has the 64-bit version. It won't crash on you, so you can actually use it. And with all that in mind, you know, the more I get comfortable using Deep Sky Stacker, the more I'll probably start using it. But if you're still a beginner to stacking your images, there is something to be said about Sequitor. It's very straightforward. It, it usually takes about half the time of Deep Sky Stacker as well to process. And the colors usually tend to come out a little bit better than Deep Sky Stacker. But for the end result, you can both make them look largely the same if you know how to edit your photos. And the Deep Sky Stacker photo usually does come out a little bit cleaner as we saw today. But again, I can go up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and I can just do a little bit more noise reduction and get rid of that grain. But it's still not going to look probably as good as the Deep Sky Stacker image even after doing that. Yeah, they're comparable. So I think that's the big takeaway today is that regardless of which application you use, you're going to get a great result either way. But the big thing really comes down to knowing how to edit your photos because this is how the Sequitor image started off. I mean, there's not a drastic difference just because I went through it quickly, but it really does help to understand the proper ways to edit your photos here in Photoshop. All right, well, that's about all I have for you. So as we saw today, Sequitor and Deep Sky Stacker are both great options for PC users if you want a free photo stacking software, and they're both going to produce an image largely the same. The big thing though that it comes down to is how well you can edit your photos. And it can be very difficult to learn how to use all these curves and levels adjustments. There's just a lot to cover. So if you want to learn everything you need to know about editing your deep space images, you can head over to my website and I did just release a deep space course which has 10 hours of tutorial videos. So I'm going to show you how to take these images, how to actually find the nebula, and of course how to edit them to get the best possible results. So you might want to check that out. I also have 50% off on all of my Star Tracker tutorials. If you've been thinking about getting one of those, now's a great time. Uh, but that's about all I have for you. And in the future, we're going to be doing some on-location videos. I know you guys want to see more of those. So I'll head out on location, and I'll show you some different ways you can set up and get better results with your tracker.